Hi there, we're so glad to have you join us on NAPTIP On The Move, a weekly program that informs, educates and enlightens you on issues of human trafficking, violence against persons, activities of the agencies including prosecutions, awareness campaigns and of course, victims stories that reveals the antics of human traffickers. I'm Angela Agbegi, thank you for joining us. Today's episode is an interesting one, as you'll get to know once more about the NAPTIP mandate, recent changes and innovations, then of course be informed about some of the strides of the agency under the leadership of Dr. Fatima Waziri Azi. Don't go away, it's NAPTIP on the move. Established by the Trafficking in Persons Prohibition Enforcement and Administration Act of 2003, the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons is a specialized anti-trafficking law enforcement agency mandated to investigate and prosecute all cases of trafficking in persons. NAPTIP also implements the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act of 2015. With nine zonal commands across the country, NAPTIP employs a five-pronged approach of policy, prevention, protection, prosecution and partnership to fight the scourge of trafficking in persons and all forms of violence against persons. Led by a dynamic and visionary Director General, Dr. Fatima Waziri Azi is an Associate Professor of Law, Nigerian Institute of Advanced Legal Studies. Associate Member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, United Kingdom. Notary Public for Nigeria, a distinguished academic, a public author, legal practitioner and human rights activist. Prior to her appointment as Director General, she was the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Rule of Law, Office of the Vice President. Dr. Waziri Azi obtained her Bachelor of Laws degree from the Amadou Bello University, Zaria, Barrister at Law Degree from the Nigerian Law School, Lagos. Master of Laws Degree in International Law and Human Rights from St. Thomas University School of Law, Miami, Florida, USA. A Doctor in Juridical Science Degree, PhD in Law from the University of Pittsburgh School of Law, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania State, USA. And a Certificate in Public Leadership from the Harvard Kennedy School Executive Education Program, Boston, Massachusetts, USA. Her past work experiences include Attorney and Program Officer at Human Rights Law Service, Huri Laws, and Ulisa Agbakoba Legal, Lagos. Legal Associate at the New York City Administration of Children's Services, Division of Legal Services, New York. Legal Fellow at Transparency International, USA, Washington, D.C. Research Fellow at the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption, PACAC. She has authored and edited books that have been published in reputable local and international journals, presented many papers at national, regional and international workshops, roundtables and conferences. She is a member of many associations, including the Nigerian Bar Association, New York County Lawyers Association, 
Association of Women in Development, Women in International Security, and the International Scrabble Club. Dr. Fatima Waziri Azi assumed duty on the 13th of September 2021 as the 7th Director General of NAPTIP. Given her background in law and human rights advocacy with Dr. Waziri Azi's academic pedigree, the agency is set to attain greater heights. Well, it's time to hear from the Director General. You don't want to miss this. Stay with NAPTIP on the move. An effective and efficient leader sets goals and targets. This helps to guide, focus, give direction, enables monitoring and evaluation, and ultimately leads to greater success and performance. I always knew trafficking in persons was a problem, but sitting on this chair for three months now, it is not a problem, it is indeed a crisis. So before my first management meeting, I already had you know, a rundown of the things I needed to do. I was clear about what my strategic priorities was going to be. And those and I ensured that those strategic priorities were going to plug into the five overarching priorities of the agency. And coming from you know an anti-corruption background, I knew that my number one goal was to enhance the investigation and prosecution of high profile traffickers because I believe that is what sends a message of zero tolerance. Then my number two strategic priority was to have an evidence-based, sustainable reintegration and return programs for victims. Because um, looking at the, the records of NAPTIP, yes, NAPTIP has um, supported close to 17,000 victims of um, trafficking in persons and smuggling of migrants. For me, when we talk about victims of these heinous crimes, I want us to support them as long as they need to be supported because these are people that have gone through a lot of horrors. These are people that pass through Sahara Desert. These are people that pass through the Mediterranean Sea and all that. So when you listen to them, the pain, the trauma, these are people that need long-term support. I'm also looking at ways in which we can um, improve their employability. So since inception of NAPTIP, NAPTIP has um, sponsored 13 victims up to university levels. And out of the 13, three are actually employed as staff in NAPTIP. And we are also aware that the federal government has a lot of initiatives that are targeted towards the youth, that are targeted towards medium and small and micro enterprises. So I've already started conversations to see how we can plug them into um, existing federal government initiative because that is the only way whatever we do here can be sustainable, you know, in the long term. Then my third strategic um, goal is to um, scale up awareness creation, especially at the sub national level amongst um, urban poor community and um, in the rural areas and also amongst the youth because I feel we have to consistently consistently push the messaging out we have to consistently amplify this messaging because in as much as we think that we are reaching millions of people we still have you know people that we fall through the cracks and since I assumed office in, in September, you know, we'll be receiving reports, petitions from families, you know, asking NAPTIP to, to help them repatriate their words. We have people trapped in Saudi Arabia, we have in Dubai, we have in Turkey. Apparently, Cyprus is now a go-to destination. So most of these people are, are tricked. They are, they are deceived, you know, they are promised a better life, they are promised greener pastures, all lies. And when they, you know, get over there, what is waiting for them is either forced prostitution 
or you have um, bonded labor or, or forced labor. Then um, number four is to enhance the visibility of the work and the successes of NAPTIP and not just NAPTIP and um, NAPTIP's partners and also our reporting channels because I want us to get to a point where NAPTIP's um, short code which is 627 is at the tip of the lips of every Nigerian so I want us to get to a point where you just ask anyone on the street oh have you heard about NAPTIP? You say, yeah 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 we know NAPTIP Oh, do you know about NAPTIP short code 627 or toll-free number 0703 Because one of the main functions of a state is to have in place people-centered access to justice. And when we talk about people-centered access to justice, we talk about access to information. You know, people should be able to resolve their problems to a certain extent. And how can they do that when they know what to do and when they know where to go. Sharing her experience so far, she highlights some of the achievements in just a few months. My experience has been awesome. It's a lot of work because of the different dimensions of, you know, trafficking in persons. When you talk about child labor, you talk about forced labor, sexual exploitation, um, organ trafficking, which is now one of the new, you know, new trends. You talk about domestic servitude and all that. But I thank God for, for the strength. I thank God for wisdom. I have a very good working team, very dependable and all that. So, so I thank God for that. So we've had some you know, successes since I assumed office in, in September. We recently deployed two equipment to our Kano office and also to HQ here. And basically just to enhance the, the process of investigation which we eventually set us up for more convictions. Then we've had, um, when I came on board, NAPTIP had recorded a total of 484 convictions. So between September and now, we've had six more convictions. So we've had two convictions in Kano, we've had two in Sokoto, and we've had two in um, Edo State which I believe is a good thing. And um, based on intelligence reports that we received here in NAPTIP, we've had 19 repatriations with the wonderful support of um, IOM. And we currently have um, 15 um, joint ongoing investigations as well. And um, with the support of the British and with the efforts of the joint um, border task force. We just recently filed a case in the Federal High Court in Lagos involving cooperation with um, federal counterparts. So this is the first time this is happening. We were able to facilitate evidence using the mutual legal assistance to get evidence from a foreign country to Nigeria and the evidence we received led us to arrest the, the target and um, we've been able to file um, a case in court. And also, we are currently prosecuting a government official and he's been charged for numerous um, trafficking in persons um, offenses. And um, we recently signed three memorandum of understanding to prevent, suppress and um, punish trafficking in persons, especially women and children with the Republic of Ivory Coast, with um, Burkina Faso, and with Niger. And we still have pending MOUs with the Gambia and South Africa. Within the period under review, we've enrolled five victims of violence against persons in school. We've also reunited um, 43 victims of trafficking with their families, including one Ca Cambodian national We've also been able to empower 10 victims in our NAPTI um, shelter. And we also um, started the first of its kind survivor-led um, platform in collaboration with um, WorkClef called Survivor Co-Mentoring Workshop. So basically it's just survivors of human trafficking also exchange their experience with other survivors of human trafficking. And, you know, the, the platform which we intend to, to sustain 
was, you know, very useful. It was very useful. It was very insightful. It was emotional as well. So we had survivors who joined us via um, Zoom. We also had our own um, native survivors who joined. We had a survivor from Kenya. We had a survivor from the US. And we had um, a survivor from the UK who also joined just to share their experience. And one thing that was common was all these people were trafficked by people they trusted. So we had a, a survivor who was trafficked when she was 15 years old and she was trafficked by her sister, like our own sister. She said it, it took them a month to cross the Sahara and during that one month she was raped. So the agreement was they were going to, the sister was going to send her to Malaysia where she would go to school, get a job, get a better life and all that. But the, the plan was to keep her in Libya. So she was trapped in Libya for three years prostituting. So she said after three years, she just had it and said no, she needed to come back. And with the assistance of um, IOM, she was able to come back. Then another survivor shared her story. She was trafficked by her childhood friend. Her best friend trafficked her. She was locked in a house for, I think, about two years. And things were being, being done to death. The agency has enhanced its sensitization and public awareness programs to reach more people. We were able to reach about 10 million people during the 16 days activism campaign about sexual and gender based um, violence, which, as we know, is a, a global um, time of the year where countries around the world use it to sensitize people and, um, you know, just share information about sexual and gender based violence. So, for us in NAPTIP, we also had a series of um, events, phases of activities, not just here in Abuja but across our nine zonal offices. So we had um, awareness creation work which we did in collaboration with the National Human Rights Commission, we did in collaboration with our key partner and the FCT sexual and gender based um, violence response team. We also um, kicked off a, an online social media competition for young people where they will upload a creative and informative 90 seconds video on sexual and gender based violence just to encourage young people you know to talk about these things to be aware because most people don't really understand or recognize the science of sexual and gender based violence for instance control in collaboration with um, a civil society organization called the cans we launched the establishment of the first trafficking in persons and sexual and gender-based violence vanguard in secondary school. So our goal is to establish this vanguard in the 110 federal government unity schools in Nigeria and of course ultimately across the country, including you know school for, for the deaf. You know, we are mainstreaming them in everything we do for our programs, we try to mainstream them, we try to invite them for all our programs. We actually have persons with disability that work with, with NAPTIP. So this is something we are sensitive, we are sensitive about, this is something that we are deliberate about in mainstreaming them, persons with disabilities in all we do. So we kicked off um, this establishment of this vanguard in Federal Government Girls College, Abaji. It was very interesting, it was awesome, we had an awesome two hours with 1,330 girls. It was really um, very colorful. Then we have also launched the conversation with NAPTIP, which started um, on the 22nd of December with my, my 100 days in office. And it's just going to be a platform where we interact regularly with our key partners, with members of the public, you know, just to share information about the work we do, what the common trends are and how we can better serve people in the public. And um, the conversation is virtual and broadcast on all NAPTIP's um, social media handles. We have a revamped website which went live on December 22nd, so www.naptip.gov.ng. 
The website is easy on the eyes, very responsive and designed according to the federal government specification. And our goal is to make the website a depository of knowledge-based resources on trafficking in persons, on smuggling of migrants, and also on sexual and gender-based violence. About three weeks ago, with support from FIAP, we conducted the first of its kind training for journalists who report on trafficking in persons um, issues. So the essence of the training was to sensitize them on our work, also sensitize them on the current trends in this area because these trends are constantly evolving. But right now, we have a huge problem of um, interstate trafficking in Nigeria. So 75% of trafficking that goes on in Nigeria happens across the state lines. Then we have 23% that happens within the state. Then just 2% that has the international dimension. She then stresses the need for collaboration with relevant stakeholders. The fight against trafficking in persons is not just a NAPTI problem, it's an all of government and all of society problem. So we rely a lot on our sister agencies. We have fantastic relationship with uh, NSCDC, that's the civil defense. We have good working relationship with the Federal Ministry of Foreign Affairs, with NSC, NIA, with the military. We've had cases referred to us by the military. We have good working relationship with the police. We, in fact, we have a number of police officers that support our work here in NAPTI. So it's just basically for us to work together. And of course, NAPTI enjoys an amazing um, range of goodwill from the international community. We have very consistent um, donor partners, even the embassies. Like, you know, if and if nothing, um, COVID-19 has shown us the fragility of globalization. So once one country is not safe, all other countries are not safe. So if Nigeria that has been highlighted as a, a country of origin, transit and destination for trafficking in persons, if we don't have our, our, our house in order, then no other person will go to bed. And what that means is for us to have enhanced collaboration, communication and coordination with not just our neighbours, which are mostly ECOWAS countries, but also our international partners. Finally, a few words for Nigerians. NAPTIP was set up in 2003 to tackle the scourge of trafficking in persons in Nigeria. And what that means is NAPTIP was set up for you. So we are here to work. You know, we are here to listen. We are here to, to support you. We are here to protect you. Reach out to us, you know, don't be quiet. If you notice something, you say something. We have 627 is our short code. You reach out to, uh, to us via 627. We have a toll free number 0703 We have our email address, which is info at naptip.gov.ng. I believe in being thorough. I believe in being you know, following things, I believe in following things true. So just to assure Nigerians that you have to remain vigilant, you also have to do your homework. There's no free lunch anywhere. Life doesn't owe you anything. And when someone comes with a near to perfect um, offer, I'm not saying all offers are not legit, but when someone comes with, you know, an offer, also do your homework. If it's somebody you know, because most of these crimes are perpetrated by people we know, you know, by sisters, by brothers, by uncles, by aunties, ask questions. Whenever you migrate, do it the right way. Because most countries are built in a way that once you get into them as an illegal migrant, the system locks you out. And a good example is the American system. And also for, for young people, just be patient, be content with life. You need to do what you have to do so that you can do what you want to do in future. And what does that mean? Stay in school, 
work hard, get good grades, just follow the normal trajectory of life and life will lead you to where you eventually want to be and be patient. All these, when you go on social media, you see people living large, it's all a facade. Don't compare your lives with other people. Everyone has a story. So you tell your own story. Everyone has a trajectory in life. You find people who probably graduated universities three years before their peers, but they wait 10 years before they get a job. Or you find people who could not pass jam. It took them five years before they got into university. But immediately they graduated, they get a job. So everyone has a, has a story. For women out there, I know we constantly say, um, give us um, a place at the table. Once you are given a place at the table, use your voice. Indeed, reporting cases of human trafficking and violence against persons will help to curb the scourge. Speak out and report all cases to NAPTIP and you are sure to get justice. For more inquiries and support or to report cases of suspected human trafficking, violence against persons and child abuse, please call NAPTIP hotline 0703-0000203 or the short code 627 or email us info at naptip.gov.ng. Visit our website www.naptip.gov.ng. Follow us on our social media platforms at Naptip Nigeria or watch our videos on YouTube. This is where we draw the curtain on this episode of NAPTIP on the Move. Till I come your way again, same time next week, don't forget to report all cases of human trafficking, violence against persons and child abuse. I'm Angela Agwegi. Thanks for watching and goodbye.